Welcome to the Six Packs and Sales podcast, where we interview standout men who are making a big impact about money, fitness, and becoming the best version of themselves. Thanks for watching. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do need to clean up my background. I think that's like a, another project of mine is I'm kind of like between two minds if I want to redesign my office or change my setup because I have a decent amount of tech in here. Uh, but I think the problem for me is just like getting specific things in certain places. And I just want like kind of a better background and setup, which it's fine right now. But yeah. I do have a lot of just camera equipment and stuff that I don't really use down there as well mm. as kind of like just just random stuff here and there but it's not bad but it could definitely use some work so yeah yeah no it's looking good man yeah i just uh well we're selling our house so i'm like out in like middle of nowhere which is so cool like just uh a lot of people frown upon living at a trailer park but like honest to god chris like this is amazing like you have like the beach down there you got pickleball court you have facilities that you can use like like we're not very materialistic so even that being said uh we have like a 40 foot park model with two bedrooms two bathrooms and a sunroom so it's like it's not even like living in a trailer you're like in a house hmm. so it kind of like it gets me out of that city area too because like as you know I'm I'm pretty talkative and when I'm at the at the house at right after work or all throughout the days, I could have like 20, 30 people coming up to my house and just wanting to talk to me just because I, all I do is talk. Yeah. That's like so your dream, like, man. Yeah, uh, it is. Yes. But now becoming like now that I've gotten clean and I want to uh, really do something more with my life, uh, I'm basically exiling myself into no man's land, nowhere. So I can actually focus on the online stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I will get caught up doing it. And I do have people coming around talking to me and stuff. I guarantee you at some point, someone's going to come up to me and start saying hi or something. So, mm -hmm. but hey, yeah, that's totally uh, fine, man. We can uh, bring them in the combo for a minute and say, Hey, you know, no worries. <laughs> right? uh, it's not, it's not that professional, I would say. So, but yeah, no, um, Speaking of the online stuff, I definitely wanted to kind of jump into that to start because I saw you a few months ago and I think I saw you and I was like, oh, this guy seems cool. You know, he you were around like 400 something followers. So I added you to like my fitness list or whatever. And then I saw you again like a month or so ago and you were at like 700 something. And I was like, dude, this guy is like crushing it. I don't know what he's doing, but um, he's doing something right. And then I noticed you were posting a ton of kind of like uh, just video content about you and your family and stuff like that. And now you're pushing a thousand, dude. So your growth has just been like one of the best I've seen on the platform. So what's going on there, dude? Yeah, I appreciate that. Honestly, it's been uh, it's been a wild ride. And literally, um, I've been just like, I've been following what the algorithm likes. And when I go all in, it's like, I have to find out every single detail of what's good and what's bad. And like, even down to like posting a meme and seeing if that would work. And it does, but mm. it's just not the same engagement that I want. Like everyone just answers the one liner questions and it's like, mm, I really want the engagement. So then I started jumping on spaces Mm -hmm. and just putting in my two cents and i'm pretty hyped up as a person i i like to drive positivity and um bring that to the game so that kind of resonated with people and the fact that like i'm pretty open with things like you know i i already said that like yeah i've been a drug addict i've been an alcoholic for 13 years um and then you know something clicked in me after i hurt my back and it just kind of resonated after that. So um, mm. they really like that kind of story and yeah. that kind of realism, I would call if that's a word, but <laughs> um, it is a word, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, just engaging, like doing what we're doing right now is something like, oh, and hundred percent new to me, like being in the corporate world, it was like, oh, just a zoom meeting and you get like a bunch of the, um, you know, the office people just rambling on about their coffee and weather and stuff. And it's not really that engaging. So when I started talking mm -hmm. and everyone's like, Oh man, 
he's actually talking like about real stuff. I'm like, yeah. So what about the president? And they're like, Whoa, we can't talk about that. Yeah. I'm like, well, why not? Like, so that, that was kind of weird to me, but this is like, this is cool. I like this. This is a really special moment for me I, at least. Thank you. Yeah. I agree with that. That's kind of what brought me to X too, is when I started, I mean, it was Dan Coe's videos that got me to kind of focus on it. But what I noticed is that I was trying to kind of work on several different platforms at once, like Instagram, LinkedIn, and I'd put in posts on some stuff like Instagram or Facebook. And I'd be like this, I think this is really impactful for me. And then no one seemed to care. And I was like, well, it's probably either my writing or just like people just aren't interested in that kind of stuff. Like Facebook and Instagram to me, it's like I get on, I upload pictures of family and then I just get off, you know, pretty quickly. But, you know, most of the time, like I notice on X, that was the place where the vibe was more that self-improvement um, networking effect of people helping people. And I was like, dude, this is what I'm looking for. And I know LinkedIn has the same type of thing, uh, but I've been mostly on X and I think you are too. Uh, but it definitely seems like a place where you can just be surrounded by a network of awesome people. But I think that's kind of my favorite thing, too, is the most valuable I've got so far has just been the improvement aspect of meeting so many people and having them just be there as a support system and help you along your way. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Like for every I would say for every one really good person that I find on X, I would have to go out and find 50, go mm. out and weave through 50 people in real life to get the same mindset, the same goals and stuff like that. Because like, you know, I've, I've worked pretty hard for what I've got, and So have you, and you mm. kind of get like those 50 people or sorry, 49 people that will say, Hey, that must be nice. You're lucky. You, you, you know, you, it's so great that you have it all. And they don't actually understand the work and commitment that you put into it. And it seems like X people do understand that, that, mm -hmm. you know, you do work hard and you're consistent and you follow through. And the thing about X is like, if you have somebody that trolls you or you don't like, you can just mute them out of your life. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that to like, you know, your family members or, you know, maybe your your best friend's wife and you're like, oh, now I got to put up with that for a couple hours. So it's definitely a, a, a new world for me not having social media before. And this is like, like you said, it's 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 a new world. Like it's very encouraging with the community. 100 percent, man. So uh, I definitely think you stand out on spaces. And I would say that's a huge reason for your growth, man, is. I haven't been doing as many as I used to, but I think certain people I know of, they do are consistent with their spaces. And I think that's something we're going to continue to work on as well. And I think it, it's a great way to, like you said, kind of break through those digital barriers of just seeing text, um, just hearing someone's voice, uh, seeing a picture of them, a video, like, I mean, it is worth a thousand words. Writing is is huge, obviously, but I just think it can be more impactful with the use of video and that type of thing. Yeah, totally agree. And I find that X is really relying on that realness. Like, cause I mm -hmm. see like, I did two posts yesterday and they were pretty similar in like quality. And I put one as a real picture and one as an AI picture. And one got triple the amount of impressions. And it was like, oh, okay. So then like, what I really want to do is like delete the one with the AI photo and put a real one in and see what happens. Oh yeah, just do it, man. You know? just see, put the exact same post with a video or picture and you can just test it two different ways. And that would actually make good content after that is to say, here's an example of a, the same post I did uh, three different ways and here's how it performed. Cause I think that's gonna naturally drive curiosity as well. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm definitely going to pull that off today then. Do it. Yeah. yeah. So, dude, tell me about your life before, because I think you told me you were in kind of like the HVAC world, uh, corporate sales type thing. Um, and then kind of I know you said you had some addictions as well in the past. Like what was what was the old Josh kind of like the the vibe or what you were uh, what you were experiencing every day? Yeah, so there's like, I, I would say there's three segments of Josh, like my teenager growing up, that's when I was like, uh, we came from like a welfare family, where we really had to defend for ourselves. And like, you know, me and my buddies, like, would go ahead in stores and steal food because we were hungry, um, mm -hmm. where we, 
um, got caught up in uh, creating like our own little gang so that we could make money so that we could pay for our hydro, um, that kind of stuff. So it really resonated. And like, here's a little secret there. Like my, I met my wife and she was like, a, like a top A student. Everything was good. She fell in love with the bad boy and we oh, kind of yeah. <laughs> kind of sucked her into that world to the point where like, we were actually like robbing other drug dealers and, Dang. and it was like getting pretty, pretty hefty. So I think it all changed. That moment changed when um, I was riding on my bike after picking up some uh, some drugs to go sell it. And it was really hot that day. And I jumped on my bike and I coasted down the driveway and I ended up passing out because I was up all night. I was in sleeping well. I didn't get enough water and I was in an air conditioned building and it was 40 degrees outside. So I passed right out and I ended up hitting my head so hard that it landed me in the hospital for a bit. Mm. and um my eyes were actually brown and now they're like a starburst yellow and blue on the outside so i uh it was my last year of grade 12 at the end of the school year and i got exempted from the uh the exams for that year so when i was going through that something clicked and i said hey man like you know you don't want to be living this life for the rest of your life it's a small town everyone knows each other you already have two two of your friends od'd on drugs mm. and um that's when i said okay we gotta move far the furthest away that we possibly can mm. and my wife got a job or a, a for culinary she went to school for mm. and i wanted to become a police officer because i thought it was really cool how one of the officers were treating me because we got caught for a couple things. And instead of putting us through the jail and all that, he literally made me do community service for his organization okay. in order so that, you know, he could kind of fix us and give us the understanding on how like other life, how it could actually be turning yeah. out. Okay. So that was the first phase. And that was like, I call it gang banging Josh, where, you know, he didn't care about nothing. And then it kind of resonated to me wanting to become a police officer. And when I did that, um, I was a security guard at one of the parks there. And um, that night on December 27th, uh, at about two o'clock in the morning, I was in this thing called a fan shell. And it was like pretty much like an office. And we, my wife came over, dropped off some coffee and some some pizza that night, and mm -hmm. I heard a bang. And before then, it was like a bunch of kids in a dumpster uh, playing around, and I kicked them out of the park because I said, you know, it's park rules. Mm -hmm. uh, so I decided to go around the other side to try and, like, scare them or have some fun, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, what's better than that? But when I made that right turn, there was uh, a gentleman laying down on the ground with about four or five people around him. And someone screamed out, he's been shot. So oh. I immediately dropped everything, told my wife not to leave the band shell for anything. And I ran over to him. So he uh, he ended up um, like he was bleeding out. He got shot through the chest and it was around two two oh four exactly. And that's when the bars were closing and there was about 200, maybe 300 people around me screaming, no yelling at me to do something, you idiot. A um, lot of swearing. I had about oh. like like a bunch of phones with 911 operators in my ears as I'm just holding him and applying pressure. Mm -hmm. And um, he ended up passing away in my arms. And wow. that was uh, that was like a short, short version of it, which is probably, uh, you know, I'll, we'll get more into detail next time. But um, it really affected me. And I didn't realize that it did until yeah. a few years later when I was working at a uh, store um doing security and someone was playing with a toy gun and they pointed mm -hmm. it at the store clerk and said hey what if this was loaded so i ended up like going off the deep end and those years before i wasn't eating i wasn't sleeping i was having flashbacks there was like water in my hands and there was blood like you could feel the you could see the blood as i was washing dishes and it was like really surreal feeling now that i talk about it now but mm -hmm. um Anyways, the gov the the company was found guilty for not following through with their protocol and procedures, and here we have WSIB, which is like a work um, a work insurance. Got it. So they were supposed to fill up a, a form and give me proper help. Well, they ended up not doing that, and um, they 
they were found guilty and they gave me 19 months of cognition thought process therapy, okay. which is basically okay. retraining the brain to understand what's going on in your head and what, what you can do with it. So I did about 19 months of that and, you know, skedaddled on my way of life. And I was told I could never, ever do that line of work again. And mm. I said, that's cool. I never want to get into it. <laughs> So about two years in between those two or three years, I ended up um, having two other people die on me. And one was from a oh. motorcycle accident that he hit a, a corner of a house. His lanyard got caught on the downshifter. Oh, my goodness. And he ended up hitting the curb and breaking. I'm assuming he broke his neck. Um, but one of the things that my therapist has drilled into my head is that if you ever see anything like that happen, you don't have to be the guy to go. You can be there and like, you know, do the best you can, but you don't have to be there and go through it again. So mm. um, I was there holding his arm. He had a uh, uh, his helmet on, um, you know, just trying to make sure that he's not moving, staying still. And then um, his buddy came over and started ripping off his helmet. No, no. Right. That was like yeah. the most dumbest thing you could ever do. Oh, so when he started so doing that, right. So when I when he started doing that, I got up and I said, hey, look, you just killed your friend. And I literally walked away from mm, it. Wow. I had to. It was no way I could have been in that moment. Was so, your like it, blood like boiling at that point? Or like, I, what were I was you feeling? Scared. I was yeah. really scared again because I was like, are you kidding me? I can't believe this is happening again. Yeah. And like. I'm the guy again. I can't believe it. Like, why, yeah. why me? Like the pity, the pittiness, right? Um, so then like about eight months later or a little while longer there, I got the job for HVAC. I got my gas technician license and I started working. And just on a busy corner, there was a kid that was riding across and the guy had the green advance and he ended up hitting him. And the kid wasn't wearing a helmet and ended up like shaving part of his skull off. And it was that was another moment I was like, oh man, like, I can't believe this again. Like, why, why is this happening? I stood there until EMS was coming. Thankfully, they were like within 30 seconds. They were like around the corner or something. Um, but he ended up passing away later on as well. Oh, goodness, man. So it was like that moment where I was like, okay, enough's enough. I don't want this to happen ever again. I hate this. You know, I really just, I did not want it happening again. And then I was driving down the road one more time in my company vehicle and this poor black truck was hitting black ice and he was swerving and stuff. And then he ended up doing something and he ended up going into the ditch and flipping. And I literally was on the phone with my, uh, with my mentor there. And he's like, what's going on? I'm like, it's happening again. And he's like, what's happening? And this guy's going to die. Like he's, he's, it's born. Like I'm, I'm here. So I go down into the ditch, start digging out the snow. And we ended up getting the window broken and he's upside down. And I'm like, Hey, are you okay? And it was like a 16 year old kid. Hmm. And he's like, yeah, everything's fine. Huh. Uh, my dad's going to kill me though. Cause I just destroyed Ooh. his truck. And I'm like, okay. All right. Well, Hey, Hey, you're alive. You're good. Yeah. We're, we're okay. Let's call in uh 911. I uh, hung up with my buddy, called 911. I said, you just stay right there. He goes, no, I think I'm just going to click the button. And he clicks the button falls falls down and then starts crawling out of it okay and i tell you this chris i gave him the biggest hug ever and i was yeah. like crying yeah because i'm like it's done the curse is over it's over so at that point i was like you know he was fine he walked out of it and that was the last time you were happier that he was okay than he was like right you know <laughs> that's the crazy part yeah, so that was that was that moment where it was yeah, he was more concerned about his dad killing him because he just got his license. He flipped the truck and I said, "No, he's he's going to be more uh, impressed that you're alive." So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I got my refrigeration mechanics license, which took me 9,000 hours and 5 years to get um on the job site uh for work. And I just kind of progressed with that and doing the normal things that people told me to do like um start uh you know buy the house uh settle down with your wife and start investing uh going on with that but there was always that ptsd moment where it kept 
giving me that hell in my own brain. And um, I kept drinking drugs, ecstasy, mm -hmm. there was cocaine. Like I was just, I was just trying to get that feeling, right? That mm -hmm. there was always that void of something. And um, I just kept working. I was working seven days a week, 12, 14 hour days. I loved what I was doing because I was like helping other people fix their problems. Mm -hmm. um, so I kept doing that. And then I lifted up the, the air conditioner the wrong way, pulled my back ouch that hurt okay it's during covid so you know we all knew how the medical system worked on that um uh, it was very limited so when i went in there they're like okay so you don't have covid but your back hurts okay move you along mm -hmm. um that's how canada works anyways unless you're absolutely dying mm -hmm. uh, so i i gave it a few weeks boss said yep you know what we'll pay you everything's good you know i i was like okay cool she's uh the best boss that i ever had so I went back to work a few weeks later and did it again. And this time it was like a, a micro tear, they called it, mm -hmm. uh, right next to my spine. So I when I went back to the hospital and they're like, well, you got two choices. You can either start, we can open you up and we can try to start fusing because you could bulge the side of your disc mm -hmm. or, um, you know, good luck with the rest of your life to kind of deal. Take painkillers, you know, do whatever you can. So that's when the drinking and the drugs really started going up. I got on uh, WSIB some more and decided like, yep, yeah, you know, this is my life. I'm going to be that poor guy with the broken back that I used to laugh at all the time and going, suck it up, buttercup. Like, you know, welcome to the trades, boys. Mm. Um, so that kind of happened. It took about three years of doing absolutely nothing at all i couldn't lift a bag that was worth 10 pounds i couldn't lift up my kids it took my wife to get me out of the bed it took like three hours just to get out of bed wow. and I, it was very severe so i just sat down started looking at things and then i said okay if i'm gonna get through this this is gonna be the hardest time ever in my life so i started doing the stretches um started doing my little exercises stuff like that um continue to drink all that and uh yeah i decided that um november last year when i got cleared to start you know living a normal life again um i would have to i got to change myself because i was 230 pounds i was still you know not fulfilling my life as i should have mm -hmm. and that was like the aha moment i woke up from a dream and decided hey you're going to join a bodybuilding competition and you're going to have the most craziest, uh, craziest transformation ever. Mm -hmm. So the moment I woke up, I literally went onto my phone, found the closest bodybuilding show, which was on May 18th. And this was like December 25th. And I said, okay, here's the list that I have to do and the list that I cannot do in this hobby. Mm. And number one was you can't drink and do drugs. So I was like, all right. Time mm -hmm. to go to the gym, time to hammer it out. And mm -hmm. uh, I hired a, a nutritionist uh, specialist or a nutrition coach, I would call him. He was a past bodybuilder. And that just kept progressing. And I quit cold turkey of everything. Uh, got a couple sponsors for the uh, for my uh, alcohol problems mm -hmm. and just started hitting the gym one, two, three times a day. Just kept hammering it. And that was kind of like the void I needed. Like, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to ask that. you about that because mm -hmm. I, I feel like what I can tell about you already and uh, the times that we've interacted is you're just, you're like a very all or nothing person. And you're like, I, I, I become very into things and I give it my all, whether that's HVAC, whether that's partying, whether that's growing on X uh, body. And like you basically, took this thing about yourself and I've kind of like thought about this concept is that like a lot of people have addictions and I'm like that too. Like I can be all or nothing. Like that's how I am in things. And it's, uh, I become obsessed with things, but if those addictions are the wrong things, like that leads to negative outcomes. So you took something and turned it into a positive addiction. And what I've called that is kind of like addiction replacement therapy, which if you look at the acronym for that, it's art. So like the thing that you do, like your bodybuilding, that becomes your art. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. 
that's a cool way to put it honestly art i'm gonna use that that's a really strong point um yeah so i sorry kept going i never stopped i and like you said yeah i'm i'm an all or nothing guy like it it kind of upsets me sometimes because i would like i will not stop thinking about it i will visualize it in my head until it happened mm. and that's when i got sober and started dealing with like the PTSD problems, my ADHD problems. I'm actually dyslexic and I have a really hard time reading and, and spelling. Uh, and I believe that's from the concussion that I had. Mm. So, um, and as I progressed longer with that, I realized that, yeah, you, you can really like uh, forecast or what do you call it? Um, you can really visualize things and then it will actually happen mm. good or bad. It didn't matter. So um, going back to the PTSD and the shooting and all the deaths, I wanted deep down inside for some reason and didn't realize it because I was drinking all the time is that I wanted another death to happen or something traumatic like that to happen so that I could save his life. So I yeah. could be that guy. You and I kind of manifested that moment. It. Yeah. Right. Wow. So going with that and then I visualized having the house, uh, you know, getting my career, like I visualized all of this stuff, like, for instance, my kids have only had one one antibiotic in their lives, and okay. they have been so healthy. They have no health problems, uh, nothing like that. And that's that's a visualization that I've had over the years. And, you know, I talk to other parents and going, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's unfortunate that they, that they do get sick and, you know, it's the course of life and stuff. But stuff like that kind of is now catching me and going, OK. Um, as we got closer to the bodybuilding show, uh, things got really hard. Like I was dreaming about eating rice. <laughs> I was, I was actually miserable. <laughs> like I couldn't believe how miserable of a person I was until somebody was like, Hey, Josh, you are being a real loser right now. You're just sitting there and you're not moving. You're not doing anything. You're still running and working up, but that's all you have the effort for. So at one point, I was like, man, I wish my wife wouldn't work so much so that we can do this together because life's really hard right now. Mm. And out of nowhere, she ended up losing her job like mm. three weeks before it. Wow. And I was like, wow, this this is really powerful. Like this is something that's really resonating with me and going, OK, like you can't be you can't be thinking like that. So we get closer to the show. I do the show. Amazing. Like it was like the best rewarding time of my life. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't believe that I've just went from, as I call it, being loser Josh and being broken like a little kitten to being a complete warrior, strong. My mental game is there. And mm -hmm. I got things mm -hmm. like, what else could I do with my life? Mm. And in April, that's when somebody, uh, someone at the gym was like, Josh, you got to record this stuff. You got to just like, you know, you're going to, you can be like, an inspiration to other men and like you already do it at the gym like you're you're so positive you're so you know uplifting and i think you'd be really beneficial on social media and i said nah, social media is not yeah. my thing i don't play <laughs> like, that game nah. <laughs> right so but i ended up doing it and the community has been really good uh that's been like the most supporting thing so things kind of caught on and the more i did research about it and the more i looked into it i said wow i could make a living doing this yeah, I could really like put myself out there. I could I can honestly really help people thrive and become different or be who they want to be. So I uh, I ended up taking a mental health leave from work in um, April. My mom was diagnosed with cancer stage three breast and I right in October. So she, you know, she asked for my help to really, you know, get her life back together and stuff. So we focused on like meditation, mindfulness, get the right. sugar out of your life, start exercising. And pretty much that was the, the mindset that we need to get her into in order to battle cancer. So she started doing that, getting into her therapy and about three weeks ago, I believe she tapped out and said, I, I'm cancer free. I do, I do remember you told me that story on a space. It's so powerful. Um, th just the whole process that you guys went through and being like, I'm going to be here with you and just make sure that 
whatever we do, it's going to be the best possible thing for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, Karen. Yeah. It's so cool, man. Go ahead. What, what were we going to say next? Yeah. So I, I started realizing that like, you know, the mind's so powerful <clears throat> and the more you feed it, the more you're going to get back. And when I took this mental health leave, I never knew that existed in my life. I was like, really, we're in the corporate world. All of these office people get to get a leave to take care of themselves. And one of them said, yeah, I got it for like when my dog passed away mm. and like coming from the trades and like, I'm not cold hearted or anything, but I was <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, this is actually real. So the HR was like, yeah, like, you know, this is, this is quite normal. Like, um, you mm. know, this is, this is a good thing. So I, I took it and you know, I really realized that there was more to me and more what I wanted to get out of life. So I started really looking into this and I just figured, hey, we need a full factory reset. I'm going to sell everything, restart my entire life, go into exile and do what Spartans do the best is mm -hmm. go out there and, and do all that. So we're... Uh, it didn't come until like August 1st when I really said, okay, X is my platform. I'm going hard on this. I'm going to go top dog pretty much. And that's, uh, that's where we are right now. I've met so many cool people as yourself. Uh, I've, when you wanted to just do a quick call, I, I love looking at profiles. I love looking at YouTube videos, what you have to produce. And even your, your book uh, that you recommended, it was like, okay well i'm gonna download that and that's how we interacted so yeah it's been really it's been really cool you're just an action taker but i knew you would vibe with that book because if you're like a performance person like i told my wife to read it and she was like dude i'm obsessed with this book right now and then you're already doing it like that same week you're like i'm on the compound effect man i'm loving this book it's like it just is such a it, it changed my life man it changed the way that i view things and like the long-term mindset of self-improvement because you're used to getting all these like fast results a lot of times or that's the mindset that you have but then you don't realize the progress that you're making in the day-to-day -day. and like you look back in a couple years which that's what happened to me in fitness was like I had always an average body for a long time and I was like I used to be a little bit like 20 pounds overweight like junior high I lost like 20 pounds but I still like wanted to go to that next level and I couldn't figure out like what the exact steps were to do but uh, I just started doing like a 10 minute workout every morning, just like body weight. And for some reason that worked better for me than like going to the gym two or three times a week because I was just being more consistent on a day to day basis. Um, and then I just started taking pictures of myself like every month. And then after like a year and a half, I was like, dude, I'm actually making a lot of progress here. Uh, yeah. So then I wanted to go to the next level and I didn't know the process to get a six pack. And that's when my neighbor was like, dude, I'm getting a DEXA scan. And I was like, what is that? Because I think I've heard of something like that. And it reminded me basically of um, I, I just always never knew my exact body fat percentage because I'd be at the gym and they I, I worked at a gym and they like did the caliper tests on me. And then the thing where you hold it in your hands, it said I was like eight to 12 percent body fat. And I was like. There's no way because if I look at my picture compared to these people online, like I look nothing like these guys. Um, so I went to the DEXA scan place and they told me I was like 16.3% body fat, which is pretty good. It's not bad, but I was like, okay, so I need to get as close to 12 as possible if I want that six pack. So like you, I became obsessed for like a month and I was like, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm getting up at 5 a.m. every day. I'm working out like five days a week. I would do like hit Monday through Friday or Monday and Friday, then lift every other day in between. And just of like a month of focused effort, I came back and the guy was like, you lost like six pounds this month and like five pounds was fat. So that was and I was like, I got my goal. Uh, so now I've been kind of in a chill moment of fitness, but I'm kind of focusing on the X stuff. But uh, it's it's interesting because now that I've done that, I'm able to dial it back in pretty quickly, which is interesting because I just was about like 151 and I was like, I'm not looking great. I want to kind of like dial my six pack back in. So I've been on a diet and like within like less than a week, I got it back. And that's happened to me twice where every time I need to like dial it in and focus, I know what to do. And then it doesn't take long. So 
I don't know. Like, it's just interesting how you can accomplish so much with focused effort for sure. Yeah. Like, and, and that's the thing, like I realized really quick, like with doing the nutrition, like nutrition is, I'd say 90% of it. The working out part is the fun. Like yeah. you get to play around and do it, but yeah, once you dial it in and you get into that mindset, then it, I'm finding it like, Oh, I can go up to 183. And then if I want to for the week, I just cut the carbs, do a bunch of running. And then mm -hmm. I could lose literally eight pounds and be okay with it. Like, you know, I could look leaner and all that. So I, I was right after the show, I was like doing five up, five down, five up, five down. And uh, August was like my break. Like that was like, I'm going to go all out. I'm not going to focus on anything. And we're going to go hard in September with the new program. And that's just going to allow me to go back to like, you know, kind of a weaker mind, let it, let it settle in so that I can go hard again without burning mm. yourself out. Mm, Cause as you probably know, you can probably burn yourself out really quickly if you dial in all the time. Yeah. I think for me, I was starting to like not enjoy working out in the mornings and stuff. Yeah. And so I was like getting to that point and I was like, I don't have to work out five days a week, every day at five 30 anymore. Like if I don't want to, I'm going to change up my routines, try different things, see what works. Uh, some things work, some things didn't, but I think now I'm starting to figure out like how I want to do my routine. And, you know, I just kind of like mix it up throughout the week and just do different things. But to me, the nutrition aspect, like you said, is it's the most important part for me. If I want to dial in my abs or just try to like get as lean as possible again, it just comes from the fit, the nutrition aspect. So I was going to ask you, did you ever like get a scan or anything or figure out like what body fat percentage you got down to when you did your show? So I didn't do any scans or anything, but my, my coach, he, he like told me different things to look for, like in the arm, there, there's a line in between your muscles or yeah. even, uh, in between your, in your thighs, there's a yeah. line. And once you hit like that below 7% mark, mm. then that's when there's like a certain area that it showed up for. And like looking at the pictures, I was like, wow, like you were, I, I pretty much felt like I had zero body fat. Like mm -hmm. I was more cold than my wife, which is like <laughs> unrealistic to me. So it, um, it is interesting how you become way colder all of a sudden, like when you're low fat percentage, you know? Yeah. Like I couldn't even do cold dips. Like they, oh, really? they actually hurt like painful, like not even like the, the normal stinging feeling. It was like frozen. I couldn't actually move anything. And he's like, yeah, that's because there's no water in your muscles. There's no water anywhere mm -hmm. to lube it up. Like it's just mm -hmm. frozen. So he's like, I would avoid doing that for the last month because you're, you're not going to be feeling so good. And I tell you, man, like the moment he allowed me to eat carbs to, I guess it's like bulking up or puffing up before the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, I thought I ate a lot and I was always starving, but like, Man, I was so full all the time, like almost to the point of like vomiting. But it was like I got everything down to the gram and you just start feeling that energy coming back. And the day of the show and he's like, here's peanut butter and here's some honey. And I ate it and my whole brain lit on fire. I bet. Like, if, like yeah. it was just the happiest moment of my entire life. And I think that's why <laughs> I fell back in love with peanut butter. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm not a huge peanut butter fan myself, but yeah, I'm more like I like the almond butter, but that with honey, it's it's interesting when you like go on like a run or something like this is not going to sound great for fitness, but like I went and played tennis Sunday or Saturday, whatever it was, and then I came back. And I had like a Coke Zero in a can and I just like chugged that like it was after I had some water, obviously. But dude, that Coke Zero tasted so good. I was like, man, it's it's just like your body is lacking sustenance or something and it just makes it just taste that much better. And I have heard from you and someone else that once you get below like a certain amount of fat, it's like unsustainable to live that way because mentally you can't take how it makes you feel to like not have carbs or any kind of thing like that to keep you full basically yeah yeah like at one time like the and like this is like my lowest moment as a father as like a person as when we were driving down the highway and my daughter opened up a bag of doritos <laughs> and it was like a tiny little bag nothing big or anything and just that smell alone 
like it pissed me off so bad because it was like, man, my mouth is wired. It's like, oh man, I just really want it. And I told her, I was like, honey, do you mind just like, you know, you know, closing it up for me and putting it away? And by the time she started crinkling it, I are without even looking, I grabbed the bag, threw it out the window, and mm. I just rolled it up and I just kept driving. And like she's just staring at me like wide eyed, and I'm like, oh no, what did I do? Like I did not mean that. I'm so sorry. That was really weird. She goes, oh, that's okay, daddy. And I was like, I'll, I'll get you two mm. bags. Like, I'm really mm. sorry. And she goes, yeah. okay, yep, just another she thing. Didn't she didn't even like, care. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, she was just okay with it and stuff. And and I was like, wow. I was looking at myself. I was like, man, this, the sacrifice that you, that you put yourself through of going through such a hard cut is like, even... It, it was very it was a lot like I, it was almost like there's no words to describe that feeling of you know getting angry over looking at food like I would I would stop talking to one of my neighbors because in our group chat he would go hey boys having a steak you guys want to come over and stuff and takes a mm-hmm. picture of it and mm-hmm. I'll just go all right well I'm out of this group because this guy's being an idiot and not doing it. and it's like it was very self-centering I was yeah. fine yeah I mean, it's kind of the mind state you have to be in to hit that goal of like going to your show. But at the same time, like you said, it's unsustainable for for yeah. life and it's not it's not worth it. But it's good to kind of like at least go achieve that for yourself. Um, so, dude, let's bring it back to kind of the online stuff. And I know that yeah. you're kind of um, you're on a mission right now. And I would say, like, what's what are you focusing on X like for the rest of the year? What are what are you going to be doing? So I'm definitely going to be putting out more video content. Uh, definitely it's going to be like positivity and kind of like how this factory reset is is affecting mm-hmm. my life and the kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we are uh, we're going to be videotaping a lot. I want to engage more, have spaces. Uh, you're you're obviously going to be involved with that, which is really really cool. Um, and same with Jim. So we're going to be doing that and I'm going to be working on uh, a project here or I am working on one about uh, getting my landing page done. So we're really like taking it to that next level. And with this all being new to me, I've been relying on some other people to help me out and kind of coach me through it or do it for me because like I've tried with AI to make me a web page. Mm-hmm. I, I, it is so hard to just navigate AI itself if you've never used it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be uh, showing the possibilities of us homeschooling the kids. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And showing how we can do that in our new life. We're going to be showing that, you know, you can live minimalist. Mm-hmm. and that we are going to be doing traveling as well we, we plan on going to mexico for four months oh man i love that right right we've now ne- we want we figured like when we're 50 and 60 we, just, we don't want to be those people be like man i wish we did that and we're in a great position uh covid really jacked up the the uh, my house prices we mm-hmm. got it uh at one hundred twenty thousand, and we're selling it at like you know 500 Dude, so that's insane, man. Yeah, yeah, we really lucked out on that one. So we're, we're all of those things while I was drunk and drinking and stoned and all that have really like brought me into this new wake up dream, mm-hmm. and it's now going to benefit myself and my family so that we can show other people that you know we can you can build up to that moment because if I could do it drunk and stoned and I'm just an average guy that came from nothing anybody can do it like that's that's all it comes down Mm. to is your discipline and your mindset so that's that's my plans on x is to show them that they're worth it they -hmm. can do it no matter what background no matter what they've been through um stuff like that so we're going to be engaging more we're going to be collecting more uh good organic followers i'm i'll never pay for followers i think that's the cheap way to do it and you lose the um the experience of it it's almost like when you play the sims and you have that cheat code of mm. infinite money and now you can buy everything now you just you've just ruined the whole purpose yeah of that it group. takes the fun out of it yeah it's like yeah you, you shortcut the journey but then you don't get the reward of it either right it's that cheap dopamine that is not good for anybody uh yeah, and we're all like, just dopamines 
you have like so many powerful stories just off what you said, because I think really people are kind of disillusioned with the education system. I know in the States, it's probably similar in Canada, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then like people are looking for alternative things like alternative education systems. Like how are they going to get their kids a good education? That's a safe place for them to go. Um, also like the alternative lifestyle of what you guys are doing, you know, with your mobile home or just being able to travel and then, and then going to Mexico for four months. It's like, just by documenting your journey of what you're doing, like you have so many things that I think are incredibly powerful. And I'm just like, dude, this guy is like a rising star on X. Cause you just have so many awesome things to talk about. And it's the fun thing about it is you're just documenting the journey that you're on, but it's naturally things that people are very going to be very interested in, I think. Yeah, I never thought that my life was very interesting in that way uh, until people really like highlighted that aspect. And I said, wow, OK, I thought I was just living a normal life. Like it just seemed like just the normal average Joe doing his thing and, you know, just following the rules of the Matrix. Mm. And now that I found out like there's a better way and we can kind of break the Matrix. It's, it's now or never. This is great. I am in you know, the greatest mindset of my life. I'm in the greatest physique that I am. Uh, my kids are at such a nice young age where you can still just pack them up in a trailer or, you know, give them a bunk bed type deal. And they would be, you know, okay with that. Um, they, and we're, we're pretty tight knit. We've never, we don't believe in daycare. We always, they are our responsibility. And I really want that to be one of our you know morals that you know you can't just keep tossing your kids off to other people because that's going to affect them in a negative way i find mm. and uh yeah so that's just one of my viewpoints there uh with raising kids because that's so important and something that you know we've really analyzed and looked into and like we're not the best parents at all. Like, you know, we, we try our best and I think that resonates them, but as long as I was there for them and encouraging them and giving them the best life that I didn't have, then I think that's going to be a win for, for everybody. Absolutely, dude. I think the cool thing uh, as well that you said is the fact that you're like, if anyone can do, or if I can do this, anyone can. So like, I have no doubt that other people can do what I've done. I think everyone loves a comeback story. Everyone loves like an underdog story. You've got that. And it's just like, you're showing people this version of things that they can become. But yeah, dude, um, I, I forgot what I was going to say next. But I just think it's just it's really inspiring kind of what you're what you're doing every day on the journey. So um, where can people find you like what? Oh, tell me this. I was going to ask you that. But uh, who is somebody that you want to work with? Like if somebody watches this video and they're like, I like this guy, Josh, uh, who is somebody that needs to reach out to you to kind of take the next step of their journey or just to get their life going in the right track. I figured out what I was going to say too. It's just that like you were just living your life and you were like, dude, I've had a hard life and it's been crazy, but I'm just like trying to do my best. And then it took somebody else going from the outside being like, dude, you have an amazing story. You just don't even realize it yet. And I think that's a, that's a crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't realize it until somebody puts it in your face. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I tell the kids, if you can't fix, if you can't fix somebody's problem within five seconds, don't tell them. If you mm. think that, you know, their ears are bigger or their nose is longer or, you know, something like that, you can't tell them that if it's a speck on their shirt or something on their face. Yeah, you can always do that. But, you know, don't don't point out those kind of things. Always give them the benefit and always boost that that part of them. Mm. And that's what someone did for me is that they you know, instead of looking at like, oh, this guy has a bad back, he's going to go nowhere, you know, that kind of stuff. They He literally went, yeah, you need to go inspire people. And I'm not much of a guy to just inspire people, but he says that you just need to record it. People need to hear what you're going through. And, you know, maybe you could help them out as much as you helped everybody around you. So, yeah, that's kind of like my theory on that one. Heck yeah, dude. I definitely think it's gonna uh, it's gonna work in your favor. 
So if somebody's listening, uh, who is somebody that you want to find you on X and reach out to you? Like, I really enjoy Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. I like his mindset. Uh, what's that, Caitlin? Oh, my wife's like, no, don't say that. I don't know. Um, no, I, Joe Rogan's yeah. cool. I think like one yeah. thing he's really doing is like he's bringing uh, an ability for people to have more conversations. Like I really needed Joe Rogan actually in the COVID times because I was like, dude, the world is so crazy right now. And I just feel so isolated from everyone. I just want a podcast where like people just get on and just talk. And I just hear like two people having a conversation and I don't feel like I'm getting that. And I found his podcast in 2020 and I was like, this is exactly what I'm looking for is just two people like having a long in-depth conversation about life and just like bringing some kind of sanity to the world and what's happening right now. So I think like he's he's doing a lot of good in the world. I think anytime you do that kind of thing, it's it's going to come with hate of people who don't understand like either what's going on on his podcast or like they they have this perception of him. But like if you listen to somebody talk for hours and hours, it's like hard not to like most people, you know, like if they're just on a TV show or something like and they're pushing a narrative i think that's one thing but if it's just like a regular honest conversation you know it's it 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 most people are likable in those situations and i think like if you listen to joe rogan and all the uh people that are on there most people it's like i i they're just everyone's a person just trying to do their best i feel like i think my question for you is kind of like uh somebody who's like okay i like josh's story um I don't know what my next step is like kind of guide them in the right direction. Like I think they can reach out to you and be like, I want to talk to Josh, see if he can help me kind of like figure out my next steps basically. Okay. Um, I think I understand what you're saying, but uh, I think it's like any, any male that is having, you know, that struggle of wanting to be disciplined mm -hmm. or wanting to do that next level. Like anyone who's having troubles, like, you know, it it basically goes all out, right? Like I've been through the the mental problem, I've been through the physical problem, I've had past problems, and you're even daunting into the future type deal. Uh those those are all things that you know those people can really come up to. I'm super open. I will tell you every single thing in my life, except for my social insurance number. Um, but I will like anybody. I love everybody for who they are. That's awesome. Does that answer that one? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think like, yeah, it's, I was trying to just like thinking somebody who uh, is in a place where they're like, I know I can do more with my life, but I'm not really sure what next steps to take. And I'm kind of like stuck in a place and I want to get out and I just don't know like the next steps. I think those, those types of individuals who are in that place, uh, those would be kind of people I would think would be great to reach out to you and just kind of like say, hey, what's my first step? You know, like because I think fitness is a great lead in to all the other areas of self-actualization and it transforms your mindset uh, to see what you can actually do and accomplish just like it did for you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I categorize people in three three zones. There's the green, yellow and red. And red is like, you know, almost where they can't, I can't give them that help because they're like, you know, suicidal or they're mm. so, they're still so far into drugs that, you know, I'm not a counselor or a therapist. Yeah. Um, I like the, the green and the yellow zone because those are, those are people like who are starting to go back into the green and wanting to improve their lives or the ones that have started to improve their life, but they need more of an accountability to you know taking to that next level nice okay so that's good i think that's really helpful i've never actually heard that framework before so i like that so tell everybody uh where they can find you on x like what's your handle yeah so my handle is walsh underscore fit uh for twitter i am avg dot uh josh on instagram and youtube is coming up i just started doing a quick one on those and yeah. you can follow my uh beehive news uh newsletter nice so if they find you on x they could just get your newsletter and then uh eventually youtube channel you got it all Dude, right there i think you're gonna do great things man like i've met you just recently but like i can already tell 
you know, you're going places and you have like big things in store for you. So I'm super pumped that we've met and that now we're on this kind of journey together, man. I love it. You're a like-minded person as me. And, you know, I, we couldn't have done it without being on X and that's the, the most important thing I would say for that platform. Um, yeah, I can't wait to keep working with you and you, you're definitely inspiring me to do more. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Well, tell the family, hey, it's been great talking with you so far, and I'll see you later today. You got it, Chris. Take care, man. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, bro. You too. Thanks for tuning in. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and following the channel. And check out the description below for some free resources on how to get started on your sales and fitness journeys. See you next time.